major detail that people will run into if they're using Apple awesome. editing. Yes. So working with students and doing their videos and their pictures with digital media and combining multimedia projects, mm -hmm. if you use Apple Note to use at like Microsoft Document, it will not convert over to Adobe or Microsoft or any other media playing outlet because Apple will not give license or rights to the certificate to transfer it over. So what you need to do, if you use that program, Apple, on your phone, you need to get it and transfer it yourself into a PDF format, export it into something Microsoft, Adobe, whatever you're going to use, Creative Cloud, and then publish it and then share it because if not, the person that you're sending it to is not going to be able to have rights. You're going to have to give them a password, access to your mm -hmm. personal information. It's going to be locked and sometimes it gives the Microsoft or whatever uh, uh, device that you send it to, gives it a virus or it shuts it down or it crashes it. Oh, Jeez. Apple, like Apple does not play well. Apple, Apple doesn't play locks. well with others. Yeah, they, they, will lock they never have. Yeah. yeah. So what? A lot of the students had issues and problems, and so it took me like a long time to actually. They had to actually log into their account, and then uh, you see if you even send your information in an email and say, "Oh, just change it for me." No, it's not going to work like that because mm -hmm. you own those certificate. Uh, certificates uh, that are um, put into your program or your own personal account that sends it with your information with that email or digital media that you created. Cool. It's very useful and I apologize or I'm sorry. It's my sympathies for whatever horrible thing happened where you found this out. Oh yeah. Well, well yeah. I it, the first couple times I, I figured yeah. it out and then after that I, I had to, you have to drill it into people's heads that I understand you use this app, and I understand that you're not compatible with uh, technology or you don't like using it, but you're going to have to find a way to get it into a format that runs it through um, Microsoft Media, Play, um, Google uh, Music, and whatever else other apps that are used. It, it's not compatible. It will not transfer. And, and how this relates to the media stuff is this is why I'm really stressing like avoid the apps on your phones no matter what they where they are because they're going to do this these third-party apps what's really nice about them is that they create these more general file types right so yeah. you can get the tiffs out of your phone or the jpegs if you want them for whatever reason you want a lossy version these are how you bypass all that proprietary stuff those HEIC files that your iPhone you know has same problem Apple's the only one that'll read those HEIC. You have to get a converter, and it's hell, like you talked about. So, That's weird. Yeah, yeah. So, um, any other questions or comments before we get to the show and tell? No. Okay. So, the first thing I'll show you. This is really one of my favorite things for what we're trying to do in the communities and get that stuff, especially with your great aunt shoe box that she won't let out of her house. Is like you noticed in the example photos I had from Facebook. A lot of times people are trying to take photos. The real problem is getting lighting where your phone and your hand aren't in the picture or it's the angle thing, right? You're gonna, you can't get it squared up perfectly. This thing is shot box and I didn't have it up because I want to show you how easy it is to set up is um, the solution to all of that. This is essentially a light box, a very portable light box. Um, and if anybody brought stuff, just so you know, for all this stuff, it's, I'm going to have it here the whole conference, so if you have, you want to mess around with it and you want to come and play with it, feel free to come and do that, or if you have questions about it and want to try things out for any of it, we'll do that or come back later. But if anybody has, because I forgot to bring examples uh, of, well, I probably have one, but if anybody has something they really want to try, here we go. So essentially it just really creates an even environment. What this is designed for is actually designed specifically to be used with smartphones or with DSLRs because what it allows you to do, first, let me find an example. Well, we can just use Why don't you use that, that little tripod thingy? 
Well, we, I'll get to the tripod thing. No, I'm going to use that for your object. What? Oh, well, oh, yeah, I will when I get to the object, but I'm going to do an uh, image of photo oh, first. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, you just put it in here, and the light's adjustable because this is a good example, actually, because it's very shiny. Shiny is always very difficult. Mm -hmm. But what you can do, actually, oh, I forgot to put those in, is this also comes with things that can kind of cover your light slightly. <laughs> what do they do with those? So that you can, um, I'm never even open this one. You can alleviate that a little bit. So if you want to come up and you can see if you're interested, there's these two light bars that are up in the corners that provide your light source. Right? And so this thing will diffuse the light a little bit. So you can get a shiny thing. And it basically really is designed so that you can take your phone and open your camera and it's that and you can look through there and you'll see I mean it's it can be a little tricky you do have to do a little bit of work but you can scale your photo you can straighten it up it's going to be a slight 90 degree angle and you can take a photo feel free anybody who wants to can come up and try with their phone you can get a photo that is going to give you a flat even non-glossy without you know a lot of image artifacts and sometimes you know it's not perfect and light comes through these other holes. You can cover them with something else if you need to, if there's too much external light. But the light box does a great, it, you know, it, it's very good at eliminating all that, all those variables. So for objects, it is designed to actually do objects as well. And we can take the little tripod, put it in there, and it requires, well, you can take a top down if that's what you want. But this thing also comes with this weird little thing. So it's charmingly low tech somehow. You just want to do that. Uh, it will hold your iPad if you need it to. It will hold your phone. It's adjustable. Um, there's actually, it actually has lights as well to even out the lights. I'm trying to know where the. Then the guy who designed this, I talked to him, and he really actually did. His vision was about doing family photos and things like that. So he How was much really. Was this is a hundred and I want to say two hundred as the full kit. You can get the basic shot box without all the other stuff. It actually comes with a bunch of backdrops and stuff. And I want to say it's basically two hundred dollars. It's in that ballpark range. So again. It's called the Shot Box. Yeah, and it's available through Amazon. You can buy it through Shot Boxes. What, what did they do to this? Anyway, I. It has potential. Here, you want to do it for you? Well, yeah, it's like disintegrating. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thanks. You have a. Keep needing to get one of those. Uh, and if anybody wants to try to use this as well. Here you go. Thank you. Thanks. No Again, charmingly, weirdly. Almost, it's like clearly there was a better way to design that. But and then you just take your phone and you can do some actually pretty good shots of objects. Nothing fancy like 3D, probably. Although really, that's probably more. Now you're not you're going through the app you told us about. You're going no, I'm cheating right now, just <laughs> for time's purposes. I just mostly want to show you what's possible. Um, you, you, you would open actual. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, well, uh, let me just do that. I, I was being lazy, really. Um, so, let's see, where's ProCam on my phone? Oh, no, no, I'm glad you did, actually. You're keeping me honest, and I'm perfectly happy to do that. So, there, that's inside ProCam, and see that's getting glossy, so I don't know why I put it black side down. There's, this thing has two different sides. Just flip it over. That's better. Look at that lovely tripod. So, where is it? Oh, that's right. It's this. I'm not in my phone. So, that's the focus thing I'm going to do right now. There. So, there, there's a backdrop thing that would eliminate that thing, but you can adjust. And let's see. That looks for shadows. 
that color and then taking those off. No, that makes it worse, doesn't it? I have found that for objects it's not as perfect as it is for photos, but and maybe this is a slightly too big of an object for this particular purpose, but it does a pretty good job with taking it. So there we go. There's a picture using ProCam. Getting a lossless TIFF. So if you fiddle around with it, you can do things like eliminate all the shadows. I probably should have put the backdrop in here. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm going to skip that part. But we can do it later if we're, we're you know, individually looking at these things and stuff like that. So, so Shane, do you have yeah. a list of this equipment that you're hoping to I will to be in? putting it up on our resources page on our web. And it sounds like if there's enough... Well, if anybody wants it, well, I'll put together a list that I can send out to you as well. Yeah, really want people to start doing that. So we'll make sure that there's a list uh, at some point. But we'll also put it on our blog. Um, haven't forgotten the resources page. So uh, the next thing is this thing. So when we were talking about scanning and scanners, and like I said, ideally, you bring it in somewhere that has a big, nice flatbed scanner. But if you can't, because your great aunt is paranoid about her pictures. This thing called the Doxy Flip is the only portable scanner I found so far that really does the job well. A, it does a minimum, it does has two settings, 300 DPI and 600 DPI. And the reason it's called the Flip is, okay, it is a standard flatbed scanner, and what's nice about this one is actually even battery operated. So it's really designed to be portable. Flatbeds, are not really portable. They're very sensitive and you can mess them up just by transporting them, not this one. It's built to be transported. So as you can see, it'll do pretty much everything up to four by six. This is its scan bed. But what is really nice about it, and it, it will, let's see, what did I do with my, it's, it's very easy to operate. For one thing, it also doesn't need to be connected to a computer like most scanners are. It actually puts everything on a standard SD card to transfer to your computer later. It's one downside is that it wants to only talk to its proprietary software, which you get for free with it. So it's a bummer that, actually, and it's not really true. For doing the stitching, which I'll talk to you in a second, it does require that, you can get stuff out as JPEGs. And unfortunately, it does only save as 300 and 600 DPI JPEGs. But they are, you know, they are at those standards. So unfortunately, it's not, not lossless. But it's it, again, if you can't get stuff to a, a scanner, it's doing 600 DPI scans. So it's very easy to use. Turns on. It actually has a little window for showing you if your scan was successful. Um, and you know, pretty standard scan. So you can see. All you do is press the green button, and it scans the thing. Oh, yeah, there it goes. But what's really special about this device and why it's called the Flip, yeah, see, now you, you know that it took a successful scan, is that what it's designed to do and why it has this window on the back is you can take this off and you flip it over and what you can do is say you have something larger, and I won't do this because it will take some time, but what you can do is you scan and you can scan if you overlap an inch, you could scan this whole thing, and it has a stitching software which will put it all together. And I was very skeptical about this, but everything I've done actually works. So you can do very large things, right? And it does a actually really, really good job of putting them all together. And this is how you just, it's really a window so you can make sure that you're staying relatively even and doing the inch overlap and everything like that. So this is a very useful, versatile device, and it's also, I think this one's really they're like 275 is how much this one is. And what's it called again? It's called the Flip. Well, now it's, it used to be called the Doxy Flip. They changed its name just recently to the Flip Pal. And I'll put it on the resource list. Yeah. I'm assuming it's rechargeable. Uh, well, it's battery operated. So you put AA batteries in it. You could probably use AA rechargeables in it. So, But it operates on two AA batteries. Okay, so for something bigger, would you have to, like, Mm -hmm. yourself? Yeah, so that's so what you do is is uh, yeah, it's basically you would come, you would set it down because this is the scanning mm -hmm. side, right? So you'd set it down, you do is the full scan, then you would just move it down, overlap about an inch, do another scan, do it again, do it again, and as near as I can tell, based on my experience, it doesn't really 
care what order you do that in. Okay. It's going to look at it, it's going to analyze it, and it's going to stitch it all together. So what you do is you do 20 scans, and then when you put it into the proprietary software, it's going to give you the stitch option. You would select the nine photos mm -hmm. and say, stitch, and it will do it, and you'll have a nice big picture. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that one is going to save as a JPEG, and you'll have to convert it to a TIFF, is that what you're saying? Um, okay. Yes. Yeah, but it'll be a 600 DPI, so it shouldn't be that terrible. I mean, I don't know why it's saving it as a JPEG. It's some weird design thing of theirs. I don't know. Can you get one that goes straight to a TIFF? Uh, they don't make one yet. And nobody else, as near as I can tell, makes anything quite like this right now. So again, it's your best field option for when you have to. I would say encourage people to let you take the photos to a uh, real scanner. Yes? Do you, are you able to see in real time what you're scanning through yeah. the software? Yeah. So you're not just blindly yeah, that's what the preview window, this preview window is for. Oh, so, oh yeah, sorry. So, that's okay. so, and, and you can, so you can go back to see. So there's a little preview window. Let's see. I don't know how to do it. There's that's okay. I trust you. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, yeah. In there, there's, and, and you can go back and see what you scanned. So however you do it, I, I, I would need to remember the settings to go back and you can flip through your scans. Um, yeah, so uh, the next thing is, let's put that there for now. Oh, there's my tripod. Where's my tripod? So this is for audio, okay? Um, and I, I highly recommend whatever doing stuff is to get a little tiny tripod like this and an attachment like this thing, which is an attachment which is really a cradle, well it's a cradle for anything, but these are really specifically designed for your phone. So, I'm this opening. Oh, wrong side. So this allows you to not have to place your phone on the table where it's going to pick up all kinds of stuff. So when you're using this app, and so the other thing I have here, which I highly recommend, is one of those devices that to me has a learning curve um, is a Zoom recorder, a four-channel audio zoom recorder, and they're on the they get up there in price. I mean, you can get an older model for a couple of hundred, but the thing that you can make your phone into is probably even more like a four hundred dollar version. But you can do it for ninety nine dollars with essentially a zoom uh, microphone that, in this case for Apple, that plugs into the lightning port and interacts with it. Will interact with a zoom app, which is free to use with it. But the Zoom app's a little bit featured less. I tested it, and the, this actually works with Voice Record Pro, uh, or Recorder Pro, whatever I called that thing before, which I'm forgetting. Um, and what's really nice, and what you want when you're looking for something like this that might uh, turn into your phone is this kind of microphone. This is actually a side channel mic, but you could actually just look for a standard XY mic. This is an XY plus other settings based on how you do it, and it's really just about the field it creates for how it's picking up audio. You have more variability with this, but an XY is what a zoom is, and it's perfectly good. You want it, that option, but really more importantly to my mind, what you want is you want a headphone jack, which as we know, all our phones are losing one by one. This allows you to plug directly into a headphone and monitor your audio in real time so that you know what you're getting and you can sit there and listen to it. So this is... It's called a Zoom IQ7. And there's an IQ6, which is not a side channel. It's a traditional, more XY. But either one will do. Um, I have a question. Yes. If you're going to shoot a video with your phone, how can you use it for the microphone also? Um, well, I'll get to that one in a second. Okay. Because it'll be this thing, which I'll talk, to, talk about. But ideally, right, so this is a thing we know, and this is general media practice thing, which is ideally you want to get your audio and your video separate anyway. So really most video teams that you want to have are a two-person team at the very minimum. Okay. So you have one person doing your audio separately so that they can capture high quality audio and one person capturing the video and you just sync them mm -hmm. in editing, right? We know that that's not always possible, right? As a, Isaiah will attest to you right here while he's videotaping us now. So, you know, the option that we talked about, and one of the reasons that I recommend Filmic Pro as an app is that it allows you to plug a microphone in through your lightning cord and pick up the audio. Uh, 
you know, in a slightly better situation with an onboard camera mic, which is right. your second ideal option versus just using the audio from your phone, which is better than you'd expect, but not, still not good. So this is really pretty much for doing oral history interviews or audio only kind of things. Okay. So, you know, it's tripods and something like this, right? Um, so, what? Oh, it's, it's a Manfrotto, has, it's a Manfrotto tripod. It's called a Pixie. It's an MT Pixie B is this particular one. And actually what I like about this one and why I bought it is because it has a floaty head, right? So you can do that. But also, flip these down, and now you essentially have something that you can shoot with like this, which is nifty. I actually didn't know it did that till I got it and realized that that's what it was doing. But it's very nice, and it's, it's, it's good. Manfrotto makes good tripods. They're going to be solid, and they're not going to be all wobbly and weird for the most part. Um, so the next thing, which is this, and um, this to me is a thing that really changes. It doesn't look like it, but it really changes. It is the thing that makes your phone into a camcorder because really weirdly the biggest problem with using your phone as a camera is holding it because nobody wants to do this for 20 minutes. Nobody wants to hold it like this and you don't have a lot of control over it and you can't put it on a tripod. But this solves all those problems. I don't know why you'd ever want to put it in tripod and portrait mode, but also it puts it in landscape mode. And what it also has is these mounts so that you can do things like use what's essentially an onboard camera, which is this mic here. It's called a video mic, video micro. With and a little baby kitty on it. <laughs> with a little baby kitty. Yes, a dead cat, as these are yes. known in the biz. I mean, it's not a full cat. It's a no, baby. it's the baby one. Yeah, and they locked off. All the non parts, like lands and things. All right, all right. And then it was genetically engineered to not have legs and arms. That's right. Um, okay, and a head. Um, so, uh, so this is actually a pretty amazingly good mic. I was again skeptical, and I was really happy. The mic itself is made by a company called Rode, which make very good mics for portable devices and stuff. And this happens to be the video micro. Unfortunately, it does suffer a little bit from Apple's dongle problem at this point. Um, you need to buy this separately because it'll convert the output to the correct output for a lightning cable and then of course an infamous Apple dongle to get it through the lightning cable. Nothing is actually uh, TSSR, TRS, TSSR, yeah. So, but what is amazing about the iographer, which is what this thing's called, it's an iographer case. And the one I recommend, at least for institutions, is their multi-case. They have a whole line which is for each individual kind of device especially for Apple devices, but this one, the multi-case, actually is adaptable to pretty much any device. So all you do is take your phone, and it will do it with the case on, and you get it in there straight, which I have a lot of problems with for some reason. So I'd be able to put my camera in there? Um, your, you mean... Your, I have a 35 millimeter camera. Well, no, because you won't need to, because you have your own, I mean, that it's a camera, so it's like a DSLR. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. really just to turn your phone into a DSLR. Oh, so yeah, you can just put it on your tripod, right? Okay. So, but what this does, yeah, so this is really for your phone. This is to turn your phone into a DSLR kind of, or a, a camcorder, really. And so it gives you this kind of control, or more importantly, it allows you to put it on the tripod, and then it also allows you to plug it all in and use it as a microphone, you know, have the onboard microphone, right? What does that be called? The, this thing, it's yeah. called an iographer. Yeah. That's the name of the company. They'll make, you, they'll sell you one specifically for your phone, or you can get the one they call the multi case. That's adjustable. That's adjustable, and different people can use it, can right? Because it'll fill all phones. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. The, the tripod screw on the, uh, the other phone holder you have is on the bottom, right? Um, it's on the bottom and it's uh, on the side, so you oh, can do it either okay. way. So then you can also use it if you're to your Instead of, well, that's pretty involved. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can stick a phone in the side like that. But totally, the, yes, you could totally do, do that thing. and do this thing with a tripod. Yeah. yeah, this is, yes, you could. Good point. Um, it just, it's, it's restricted to whatever your tripod will do. 
because this one's, I guess this one's really more about carrying it and allowing you to put um, things like the microphone on it together. The, like this, I think they have for a light, so you can do two things. But if you open, so, so, and it, I, I would encourage anyone, and you don't have to plug in the mic, go ahead and try it out, because it's really kind of an amazing and easy thing to be able to use. So does anybody want to play? Well, maybe later. Anybody can do that. It's just, a, it, it's, it's, it's the game changer for turning your phone into things. I guess the thing I would have wanted to show you with it on, but it doesn't need to be on, is, um, actually, I think I can just do it without, it doesn't need to be on there. Uh, what I wanted to point out about the Filmic Pro thing was that, um, situation where you can do remote monitoring. So you would go into Filmic Pro. You can film people and not be there? Yeah, or you can send it to like your friend and have them do be monitoring or something like that. Let's see, I have to turn on remote. Nanny cams, watch out. Yeah. Where it is? Where is it? Oh, device. Control. I get freaked out when I push somebody's doorbell and they're not knowing when they're talking to me, wondering why I'm on their doorstep. Because their doorbell oh, is looking at me. Hello to yourself, everybody. Hello. And so what you have is you have actual camera control. So here's your focus and here's your exposure. I think that's I have that right. I guess it's not going to change that much today. You know, you can start recording. I guess you have to start recording, right? So, so yeah, it's, it's, your control goes from here. So if you have it on the tripod, you can change things there. So the last thing I wanted to show you today, as far as show and tell, and this is a slightly different change of pace. Uh, who was asking about the book scan a long time ago? I think it was, oh, this was, was actually I was during. About sort of like reports and yeah, the fragile documents and stuff. Okay, yeah. Who is that? Oh, right. That's so that's what this is. This is called a seizure. I don't. I don't know how they think they will pronounce it. What it is is this one's a portable book and document scanner. And what the reason I got this particular one is because it's actually truly portable. It can operate on battery for a little while. What do I do with my computer? I kind of need my computer to see it. But, uh, it's over there. See. Okay. Oh, there we go. So, they say it doubles as an attractive desk lamp as well on their Indiegogo <laughs> page. But what's nice about this one is, let me, excuse me for a sec, let me get my computer, is that uh, it has all the features that you really actually do want in a scanner. Um, <coughs> It solves things like that problem of fragile documents because it is an overhead. Uh, I'm probably going to regret that. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. And so, for to answer this question as well, this version, this portable version, the Seizure Aura is designed to be portable. And so I essentially got it so I could do things like take it into the state archive and scan documents there without having to use their crazy weird copier that they have. Um, and so let's see. Go to my apps. Show you this stuff. And will it still work if you have it in a brace to your flap? Um, what do you mean? If you have it in a support. If your, your book is in a support. Oh, yeah. So that's one of its main features is that, um, I'll show you this if I put it in a support cradle. This thing has three laser beams that shoot out at your document. And what they do is they read the curve and they digitally flatten it out. So one of the things that they do, I'm going to ignore that, is, uh, how much is one of those? Uh, I don't know because I was an Indiegogo like early adopter. I bought it at like two fifty, but I think it's more like three hundred and fifty now. I think, um, and they do make 
They do make versions which you can buy on Amazon that are more traditional, that have to be plugged in, that have to live somewhere, that do higher resolution and things like that. This just happens to be the portable, you can take it anywhere version. What? And that's uh, one of the perverse things about this is it's not really good for photographs. This is really only good for books. It's like just below archival quality, like a 286 for some perverse reason. I don't know why. But you don't really need it for what this is designed for, which is really books. Um, and one of the things it also does in addition to flatten out book scanning, um, which it can do things too like this. Like if you're doing books, you line it up and you scan it facing pages, and it separates the pages as separate scans. And partly why they want to do that is it's really helpful for its optical character recognition stuff. So you can take, if you're scanning books, you can simultaneously create an optical character recognition version of the book. It's not perfect and you kind of have to go and hand correct it, but you get that at the same time. And you can get, you can create um, a com hybrid or combined documents where you have an OCR version sitting underneath your actual documentary or uh, archival version, your image version, so that it makes your image version searchable like an OCR document, but you're not seeing the OCR. It's an invisible layer behind it. So it's a pretty, very fast scanner. I mean, I've done 300 page books in less than an hour. So it's a very, very, once you get going, it's very fast, it's quick, it's easy to do. All you're really doing is turning the page and hitting scan again. So this is, um, again, it, it touts itself as being a photo scanner. It's not, right? But for things that are like books with text, it's excellent for that. And so that's the last show with the tell thing I have. Oh, so one other slight other feature. Yes. Oh, I was going to ask yeah. if the black mat sort of represent the range of its size scale. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so one of the other things it does is it eliminates that does bigger it, problem. Does the mat come with it? The mat comes with it. Yeah. The mat comes with it. It actually comes with these things too, which are kind of nifty. So what you do is if you put these on your fingers, if you go in and do a scan, Oh, it, it'll edit it'll it out. It'll edit it out. So you can, if you have a really badly curved book, you can... Uh, you, can you can push it down so and not have your three fingers. Yeah, so as you can see, I just did this Back scan with that, and it hmm. took them out. Well, because I wasn't very careless about it, it went slow. You have to make sure you don't overlap with your text. But it, yeah, it digitally edits it out, so you can solve that finger problem with those. So... Does anybody have any questions about any of these things? Shane, those yellow finger things, can yeah. you, you, you can use them in the center in the spine too? Um, no, unfortunately these only work when you're doing a face-to-face a -face page scan. If you're doing single ones, it, it doesn't work for whatever weird reason. Yeah, so unfortunately it doesn't do that. You, but that's how you're, I mean, you're hopefully kind of stretching a little bit if you can. This is a bad page example. It should be text and text only. So uh, that's all I have to show you. Again, this stuff will be here at the whole conference. So if it's up and you just want to come and play with it, you can. Um, or you can come find me and we can talk about it and I can share more detailed information about it. But mostly I encourage trying to play with it and seeing what you like it. Because these are the kind of tools we think can help bump up what we do with our phones every day into archival quality things that we can really get stuff out. Is this the kind of stuff you're going to have to uh, lend out? Yeah, that's exactly what we want. So ideally, if it was me, all of our partners would get the shot box, all of them would get the Niagara and things like that. Uh, yeah, they basically get all this stuff, except maybe the book scanner, right? Because book scanner probably should really live at the library. So this is basically tiers one, two, and three. And we want to have a kit that's based around the iographer. The kits were designed around the iPhone 8 because it's the right place between Apple's obsolescence and really expensive phones, <laughs> right? But the idea, and, and so a lot of it really is, you know, we're willing to put together a kit where there is a phone, but ideally everybody should be able to get this stuff for relatively affordable for their institution as long as you're willing to use your own phone. It's incredibly affordable and, and punches way above its weight for results. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yay. Yeah. Thank you everyone.